Hello, in this presentation, we will enter adjusting entries related to the bank reconciliation process for February into our bookkeeping problem in Excel, keeping in mind how that same information might be input into accounting software such as QuickBooks. We will first take a quick look at QuickBooks and then move to Excel. When considering Excel or QuickBooks, what we are doing within the bank reconciliation process, what we have done in a prior presentation, is compare the bank statement to the books and look for those items that are not matching, are not tying out. Items that are on the bank statement that are not on our books are items that need to be adjusted for. Uh, as we do that in QuickBooks, typically we'll do that in the same point in time, meaning we had a withdrawal and a service charge on the bank statement, not on our books. What we're going to do is just enter that into our books. We go to the register. We're going to say, here's the $100. We're going to say it was an owner draw in the register, decrease in our cash account, record in the other side to the owner draws. And then if we jump back to the bank reconciliation, we just adjusted that. We fixed our books and can now check it off on the bank rec. And then we can do the same thing for the service charges, the $20, the bank service charges. And yes, this is just a quick example. We'll see this in Excel and see how we'll deal, deal with this in Excel. And we'll then be able to jump back. This is adjusting the bank balance. We'll be able to jump back and just check it off in our bank reconciliation. And after we do that, then we can reconcile the only reconciling items then being the outstanding checks and deposits. Let's take a look at this process in Excel. Last time in Excel, we entered a bank reconciliation for the month of February, reconciling the checking account. We're going to go over and see the reconciliation at this time. So we're going to scroll to the right, scrolling all the way to the right till we get to our bank reconciliation. And it's going to be all the way. We see this is the January bank reconciliation. We want to be in February. So the one right next to it is the one we are currently working on. It's in columns EM through FE, EM through FE. You'll recall that we did the bank reconciliation. We tied everything out. And we had these adjustments that were on the bank statement, not on the books, those of these two items here, this $100 withdrawal and the bank service charges. These are items that the bank, we didn't realize that were there until we got the bank statement. And now we're saying, hmm, we're not going to get that money back. We're going to have to actually adjust our books for those amounts. We show that over here in the bank reconciliation as is typically done in most book problems where we have the bank book balance. Here's our beginning book balance. And then we have our two adjustments, the withdrawal and the bank service charges. In essence, what we need to do is make our, our ending balance adjust for those two, meaning we need to include those two decreases. So at the end of the day, we're gonna have two more items here on our bank reconciliation. There's gonna be a $100 decrease and a $20 uh, decrease and if we were to to copy this down then uh, then we would have our adjusted balance here which would match that out so we actually need to fix this item rather than uh, just reconcile it here once we do that then this will be our reconciling item what we'll do is then journal entries in order to do that so we're gonna make a journal entry for the withdrawal we're going to make a journal entry for the bank service charges. We're going to do this with two separate journal entries. We could combine them, but we're going to do them with two separate journal entries. We're going to say that the withdrawal is something that was taken out of the bank, and we don't know exactly what it was for, but we suspect that it was for personal use this time. And therefore, rather than putting it to miscellaneous expense, we're going to put it to a draws account. And then the second one's going to be a bank service charge, so it's going to decrease cash, and we are going to enter the other side of that to be an expense of bank service charges. So let's do that now. We're gonna go all the way to the left to get to the uh, general journal. So we're just scrolling left. We're taking a scroll all the way to the left and we will enter our adjustments all the way over here. It's gonna be as of the end of the month. So we're gonna say as of 228, we're in cell U15, U15. Is something happening to the checking account? Yes, we're gonna say it's gonna go down. We're going to say it's going to go down first by that withdrawal, that $100 withdrawal. So we're going to copy the checking account in AJ5, right click and copy. We're going to put that on the bottom because we will be crediting it in V16, right click and paste, one, two, three. We're then going to format that, going to go to the home tab, alignment and increase the indentation. We will have a credit. It's going to be in X16 of negative 100. 
We're then going to debit something for that same amount, that $100. We just need to know what that debit then should be. And we're going to say that that 100 was taken out for personal use. And therefore, we're not going to put it into some type of expense, but instead into the draws. So the owner took money out of the business for personal use. Shouldn't be decreasing net income then. It should just be taken out of the equity section. So we're going to go ahead and decrease or um, increase dark draws, decreasing equity. And note that's a little bit confusing for us to first wrap our head around what is a draw and how does it affect, affect the equity section. Remember, the equity section has a credit balance. You can think that draws are kind of like a contra equity account, meaning they're going to be an equity account with a uh, uh, debit balance, which is contra to the norm or the winning accounts in the equity section, which are credit balances. And that's because it will bring down total draws. So it acts like an expense in terms of total equity in that it goes up in the debit direction, brings down the total equity balance, but it's not part of uh, the income statement. It's not something that's going to be calculated in the calculation of revenue minus expenses. It will be decreasing, however, total equity. So let's go ahead and record that. It's going to increase uh, in the debit direction. So we're going to copy the draws. We're going to put that on top in V15. Right click and paste one, two, three. We're going to go ahead and post that out now. We're going to post the draws first. So in order to do that, we're first going to freeze the panes. Scrolling up, putting our cursor in AJ1. We are in AJ1. Then we're going to go to the View tab up top. We're going to go to the Windows group. Within the Windows group, we're selecting the Freeze Panes and the Freeze Panes. Then we're going to go to Draws. Draws is going to be our first light blue or equity account. It's in order. Assets, Liability, and then Equity. Then we'll scroll to the right until we find that equity account. Here are the asset accounts. Here are the liability accounts in orange. Here are the equity accounts. We're looking for the equity account of draws. There it is. We want to be in cell BG15. BG15. We're going to select equals within BG15 and point to that $100, which should bring this balance up from zero by 100 to 100. That same 100 then should be on the trial balance. Scrolling all the way back to the trial balance to see if that is indeed the case. There it is. Now note that that is decreasing equity because if we take the total equity, this is going to be a debit, that's a credit. And if I highlight all of that, that's all equity. And it has a credit balance of 15847 Therefore, that debit is increasing that total balance. However, it's not part of the net income calculation here. Next component will be the uh, checking account. There's our checking account here. Here's our checking account there. We're bringing it down. We're going to find that checking account on the general ledger. Here's the general ledger. We want to be down here in AN18 and 18, AN18. We're going to select equals and then point to that $100. That will bring the balance down from 99117 down by 100 to 9917. That balance then also found here, 9917, and we should be back in balance down there. Looks good. Next item. Now we're going to record the service charges. That was a $15 service charge the bank just took out of our account. We're going to say, okay, we're going to have to record that on our side. We're not getting that back. So we're going to say it's $228. The checking account here is going to be going down. That's a debit. We're going to make it go down, doing the opposite thing to it, a credit. So we'll copy that. We're going to put that on the bottom. Right click and paste. One, two, three. Going to go ahead and indent that, go into the Home tab, Alignment, Increase the Indentation. We will add the dollar amount. The dollar amount is $20. It's $20 for the bank service charge. And then we're going to debit something for that same amount, the $20 of the bank service charge. And what will that debit be? It's going to be some type of expense. I typically like to put it into an expense called bank service charge, although the amount is small at $20.00. Some companies might put it into some other accounts, such as miscellaneous or some other grouping. That's going to be on uh, the decision of the bookkeeper. We note that all the expense accounts are debit balance accounts. They only go up in the debit direction, and therefore we will increase the debit balance expense account with another debit. So we're going to copy the bank service charge. We're going to put that on the top of our journal entry in V18. Right click and paste one, two, three. 
Here is our amount here on the journal entry. We need to now post that to the general ledger. Here's where the account is on the trial balance. It's gonna be in the same order on the general ledger. Let's locate that now. We have the assets first on the general ledger, then we have the liabilities, then we have the equity. We're looking for the bank service charges. I believe they're on the bottom. They're down here in BK39, BK39. What we're gonna do is select equals, scroll up just a bit and point to that $20. Let's do that now. We are in BK39, we're selecting equals, we're scrolling up just a bit and pointing to that $20. Enter, there's the 20, there's the balance of 20. That should also then be on the trial balance. Let's check and see if it is. Back on the trial balance, there's the 20. We're out of balance by 20. We see net income went down by the 20. Now we're gonna record the other side, the checking account. That's of course our first account on the trial balance and also the first account on the general ledger. We'll scroll down to that first account. We are in cell AN19, AN19, AN19. Selecting equals and pointing to that $20, bringing the balance down from 99.17 to 98.997. So this is gonna be our new balance. We basically made an adjustment. And that 98.997 here. Also, we are in balance there. And that 98, scrolling back up, scrolling back up. That 98,997 then is our new balance that we have adjusted due to the bank reconciliation process. So if we go back to our bank reconciliation, we can see what we have there. We're gonna scroll all the way back, keeping in mind that 98,997, scrolling all the way back to the bank reconciliation, taking a scroll to the right, taking a scroll to the right till we find the bank reconciliation. Here's the January one. We want the February one. So we're all the way back over in cells or columns, EM through something like FB. And if we go back over just a little bit, we see that here was our adjustment. We started at this 99116, uh, which was right there. And then we made these two adjustments saying, this is what we need to do to get to our ending balance of 98996. We have now done that. We've made those adjustments. We've decreased the checking account. So really, we're actually here now. This is our new uh, balance that is actually our balance. So note that this portion is now somewhat obsolete. It's no longer valid because our balance as of the end of the month is now this amount. It is the ending balance. And that means that the bank reconciliation as it is in something like QuickBooks is really just this half of it because we, we made the adjustments we need to make. Therefore, we have the bank balance here we have the outstanding items are just gonna be the outstanding checks and deposits, and that will give us our adjusted balance. And if we if we examine that uh, one more time, the blue accounts, remember, are that beginning balance, and then we tick and tied everything out. So all of these, I'm gonna make these green. I'm gonna highlight these, because we found a home for those. Make those green. All of the items here, the 14 and the 24, we marked off, we tick and tied them out. We said those are, we found all those and therefore they're good. And that means that if, if that's the case, if we found all those, then the ending balance has to be uh, the same. So we're saying here's the beginning balance and we're tying it out to these two items, which are the beginning balance in blue, these two items in green, then has to end at the ending balance of the 99 uh, to 296. The only difference are those amounts on our books that we wrote in February that aren't on the bank statement. And of course, those we expect to clear in the next month. Those are the reconciling items. Those are the outstanding checks and outstanding deposits. End of story.